from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and welcome to this special Cube Insights powered by ETR. We've been running these uh, breaking analysis segments, and today we're going to talk about some spending data that shows that there's continued interest in hyperconverged infrastructure. Uh, I, so we've been running these segments over the last several weeks uh, with our partner ETR. They've got a database of about 4,500 IT practitioners and CIOs. They go out quarterly and ask spending intentions. And uh, so we've been sharing that along with our opinions. These are completely independent segments. I want to disclose that a number of the companies that we're talking about uh, today uh, Nutanix, VMware, Dell EMC, Cisco, HPE, uh, they sponsor the Cube, uh, but they have absolutely no input into uh, editorial. They don't affect our opinion in any way, shape, or form. So let's, let's get into it. Um, I'm here with Stu Miniman. Stu is an expert in this field. He's covered the, the, the space. Stu, let's look at some of the fundamentals. Uh, what do people need to know? Uh, Alex, if you put up uh, this slide, Stu, maybe you could talk to it. Yeah, Dave, thanks. I've been watching you have some fun with this. I enjoyed you know, swimming in some of the data here. And uh, as you know, Dave, we've been watching since before hyperconverged infrastructure or HCI was a term that everybody talked about. We were looking at how you know, these hyperscale trends are going to impact the enterprise. We put out our server SAN uh, research you know, years and years ago, so we know all of these companies really well, um, and despite the latest AI and cloud and everything, the data shows HCI, the simplification of the data center, building out uh, what we would call true private cloud is important today. So, right, we wanted to know when you look at the data, first of all, you know, how are the vendors doing? You know, who are the leaders in this space here? Uh, there were a whole number of startups that came in this, uh, in this space. Um, when we first analyzed the market, it was companies like Microsoft and VMware that owned the operating system we thought would be hugely important. Um, if you look in uh, the, the, the big names in this uh, environment, you know, Dell partnered with everyone. Of course, they bought Dell, uh, bought EMC, uh, which included a stake in VMware. What's that relationship with Nutanix? How is that shaping the market? As well as, how is cloud impacting things, both from a spending standpoint? Has cloud sucked away revenue from HCI as that specter has overhung everybody in, in, in the IT space? And also, how does HCI fit into multi-cloud and how does that fit? Okay, great, so thanks for that setup, Stu. Now let's get into some of the data. Alex, if you bring up the slide, the next slide. This is spending intentions for Nutanix, uh, VMware, and some other vendors, I'll go through that. Uh, but it's basically showing Nutanix and VMware are, are fighting it out, you know they're in this internecine battle and, and social and, and there's, a, there's a war going on because there's, there's big money to be made here. So. You, so for those of you familiar with these segments, this is data from Enterprise Technology Research from their July 2019 Spending Intention Survey. So they're asking about spending intentions for the second half of 2019. The end of this survey, out of the 4,500 people in the panel, 1,068 responded to this survey. So on the left-hand side, you see the vendors. Nutanix, VMware with vSAN, Dell EMC with VxRail specifically, then SimpliVity and then SpringPath uh, or Cisco. So what the chart shows is what we call net score. And net score is calculated by taking the red on the bar, which is we're going to leave the platform, the, that's the dark red, the lighter red, which is we're going to spend less in the second half, the gray, which says spending is going to be flat, the dark green or the evergreen, which says we're going to increase spending, and the lime green, which is going to add to the platform. You take the green minus the red, you get net score higher the net score, the better. You can see Nutanix and VMware with vSAN are leading the pack, um, and then we'll go through that, but then you see shared accounts. That's the number of indications for spending that they received out of those 1068. So Stu, what is this data telling you? So first of all, Dave, it confirmed kind of the, the general market share numbers that we hear out there, uh, the vendors that track that on quarterly. Uh, VMware has the most customers, has the largest revenue, and their largest partner for that, of course, is Dell. VMware and Dell go to market, joint product development, joint engineering, joint go to, go to market, uh, and it's the biggest piece of the vSAN, so that's where I, we specifically wanted to look at the VxRail, and vSAN and VxRail doing very well. They're adding new customers. Um, was this 
interesting to me that you saw VX Rail kind of ramping up a little more on the, uh, you know, attracting new companies, but also look to be losing some uh, on the tail end of the, the, the dark red, as opposed to vSAN in general is a little bit more stable. Uh, we know how many thousands of customers they have out there, and VMware is a software story as opposed to VX Rail is that full appliance. Uh, Nutanix, uh, you know, is the you know second horse in this two horse race that we really talk about here uh, from HCI. Uh, there's some discussion in the marketplace after two quarters uh, being down. You know, is Nutanix showing weakness? What's happening there? Uh, the most recent quarter announcement uh, was Nutanix is doing well. Seems to you know they, they had a little bit of change as they're going through their move to a software model uh, and sorting things out with sales and marketing in their channel. Uh, the data here shows that the second half of the year looks good for Nutanix. Um, so to some of the questions I asked in the first slide, Dave, uh, you know Nutanix and VMware, of course, the clear leaders in this space. Uh, SimpliVity, which was of course bought by HP, SpringPath, which is the Hyperflex um, from Cisco, are far uh, behind those two out there. And it seems that even though Dell and VMware are fighting very much with Nutanix, uh, that is not you know, heavily dampening uh, Nutanix's from the respondents in this survey. Okay, and just a word on the data. So you see 184 uh, shared accounts for Nutanix, 174 for, for VMware and down the line. Only 42 for SimpliVity and only 18 for SpringPath it's in Cisco. It's an indication of the size of the install base. Obviously the, the more shared accounts, uh, the more mentions, the larger the install base. Again, they're, they're, they're statistically significant. ETR does a very good job of that. Um, let's look, Stu, at, uh, oh actually I want to make an, another point here. So how are these net scores? Well, let's put them in context. The hottest net scores we've seen recently are uh, 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 Snowflake, and UiPath with 80% plus net score. Okay, so that's really, they're off the charts, they're growing like crazy. Uh, we saw uh, uh, Salesforce with 55%, you know, so in Workday, sort of in there as well, companies that are growing share. Saw SAP in the 30% range, and so you see the Dell EMC VxRail, that's kind of holding serve, you know, it's not like, dramatically gaining share, but you know, they're growing a little bit, well, and then... And I think it's a lot, Dave, it shows to the maturity of this market. HCI is not new, uh, both Nutanix and VMware have thousands of customers, specifically with vSAN, we're talking with VMware. Um, so it was more, uh, when I saw some of your charts, you know, Microsoft has, has a similar net right. score. Uh, you know, well-liked, good install base, still growing, uh, and, and the like, and brings in the discussion of when we did some cross-section of the analysis looking at cloud companies and how it is does this impact uh, their pu public cloud spend? Is this you know, uh, detracting uh, if this customer is also doing public cloud? And the, 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 the long and the short of it is uh, VMware and Nutanix are pretty much the same, if not actually a little bit better when you talk about a customer that's looking at their overall cloud spend. Uh, so to me, that really signals that both VMware and Nutanix are doing a good job into how their solution fits into a customer's overall you know, hybrid cloud strategy. All right, let's take a look at the next slide, which is talks uh, to time series. So this is hyper-converged infrastructure spending intentions, again, for the second half of, of 2019 over time. So uh, the J July 19 survey you can see is the most recent one. We go all the way back to January 17, and you can see Nutanix on the top, uh, VMware, vSAN on the bottom. We just selected those two. We're just repeating the net score and the shared accounts. And you can see these things tend to bounce around a little bit. You can see Nutanix you know, maintains the lead, but the, that the market's starting to converge. Mm -hmm. These two companies are coming together. We hear a lot about vSAN doing very well. It's kind of held on. You can see a slight downward pressure in July, in the July survey, it's unclear what that means. That could be an indication of just some uncertainty in the marketplace, some you know, economic macro, macro concerns, tariffs, you know, or potential headwinds there, so there could be some uncertainty there, but what do you take away from this slide? Yeah, first of all, right, as you showed Dave, uh, VMware is a bit more steady, Nutanix uh, gone up for a bit and come down, both of them, staying relatively stable, somewhere between kind of the 45 and 55 lately. A little bit, if you look at the overall trend, Nutanix is down. Uh, VMware could surpass them uh, from the net score uh, in the future if this trend holds, but both of them doing quite well. Uh, when you looked at all the other vendors in there, uh, of course the scale is just showing 40 to 70%. If you put all the others which are down much lower, uh, you know, you can see once again that the kind of the clear leadership, um, you know, the, these two companies just, you know, strong, 
lead uh, does not look like there are any challengers in this space that are ready to be a clear number three yet in the market. But Nutanix at one point had no competition. Yeah. Okay, now VCN comes in and oh, of course. No, absolutely. So no, SimpliVity and Scale Computing and there were a whole host of startups. There's all the you know brand new startups in the space, everything from uh, uh, little companies like Diamante, uh, Pivot3 who was around doing this before it came. So there's always been a lot there, but you know Nutanix is the one that you know separated from the pack, the only one in this space that's gone IPO, uh, but VMware's there. Uh, Microsoft won that, you know, they rebranded their Azure Stack HCI for what they put in the data center last year. So, you know, expect Microsoft partnering with, uh, you know, all of the big server manufacturers to push farther into HCI, but really has not, uh, you know, it directly impacted this uh, market too much just yet. But, but there's definitely been some pressure on, on Nutanix from an earnings standpoint, uh, stock's been hit, you've had some executive uh, uh, departures, there's some rumors about uh, acquisition with Google, your thoughts on Yeah, on yeah, that? definitely. So uh, John Furrier just had Deeraj Pandey, the uh, CEO of Nutanix, uh, in our Palo Alto studio, uh, you know, leading up to the Copenhagen show for Nutanix that I will be at. Sure, Sunil Pody, who was basically the number two at Nutanix, is now working for Thomas Curry and TK over at Google Cloud. Um, my indication from what I hear, he is not over there to help broker a deal. Uh, Sunil had a great run at Nutanix. Uh, there was a clean break there, but uh, you know there is a mostly new executive team at Nutanix now a couple of years past the IPO. Um, and you know the, the team at Nutanix, they, they have their platform, they have a bunch of SaaS offerings that they're doing there. Um, do they have a relationship with Google? Absolutely. They had Diane Green at one of their events a couple of years ago. They did joint engineering, but I actually saw that engineering effort cool off a little bit in the last year or so since the new regime came on in Google Cloud. So does Nutanix have a lot of enterprise accounts and know how to work with the enterprise and could that be a boon to Google? Absolutely. But the personnel of a Nutanix executive over at Google and Brian Stevens, who's the CTO of Google Cloud, being on the board of Nutanix, I do not think that that is telegraphing that an acquisition is going to happen. Um, it could, we see lots of big acquisitions, you know, nine or $10 billion for Nutanix um, could be interesting for Nutanix and help them get in a lot of places um, and help Google. But you know, Dave, I going on record say I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I don't think Cisco is going to you know buy Nutanix. You know, infrastructure is not the real push uh, for uh, Ch you know Chuck Robbins and that team. Uh, and at the Google Cloud event, Dave, that we were at, we saw Sanji Poonin from VMware up on stage, you know, touting how deeply VMware is going to partner. So both VMware and Nutanix are partnering with all of the clouds. VMware, of course, has a very deep relationship with VMware. They're going deeper with Google. They are even partnering with, you know, the old enemy of Microsoft. So I would give, you know, VMware definitely has a, a, a deeper and more public relationship with all the public cloud providers, but Nutanix is also partnering and expanding their portfolio to give themselves good growth beyond just the core HCI market. H HP is another one. So Nutanix and HPE are working together. It's kind yeah. of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They're, they're, <laughs> Nutanix was not at VMware. World yeah. this year, they kind of booted out, so yeah. they belly up to, to HPE, HPE. loves having, they have their as a service offerings, and Nutanix is one of those, as well as Nutanix can sell the HP. So as the, right, the Dell relationship is likely going to dial down over time, as you know, Michael Dell and the team want to sell more Dell hardware with VMware software, uh, HPE is another, and they also partner with Lenovo on the Nutanix side. All right, Stu, uh, bring it home. Uh, what, are the, what are the key takeaways on, on this uh, Cube Insights? Okay, so uh, HCI is a two horse race right now. Uh, there are interesting companies to look at beyond the two, but you know, the, 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 if you want to understand who the leaders are in the space, uh, it is you know, VMware, especially with their VxRail and Nutanix, uh, are, are the two leaders in that space. Um, really looking and understanding how they're uh, expanding into multi-cloud and hybrid cloud solutions. Uh, VMware very much with their VCF offering, which packages vSAN uh, to go into the VMware cloud offerings, and Nutanix uh, with an interesting strategy, both um, with how they really spread some of their services, like what they're doing with Zycloud, as well as some SaaS offerings, which some of them uh, really are, have a disconnect, um, you know, not in a bad way, but just are not tied directly to the hardware, what the infrastructure companies have tried to do for years. Uh, both of them, you know, VMware's done tons of acquisitions. Uh, v uh, Nutanix has done, uh, you know, quite a few acquisitions too. So your second point here, what's the impact of Dell VMware versus the Nutanix back? You say not a significant impact on spending intentions 
yet. I mean, there's clearly some evidence that the, those two markets are coming together, that VMware's pressuring Nutanix, but why do you say yet? What do you expect? I mean, well, it's the OEM deal with Dell. It, it's obviously. the OEM relationship. There is a huge pipeline of Dell hardware with Nutanix software, um, and they're at loggerhead. So absolutely, uh, the, the Dell family, Dell, uh, you know, EMC and VMware are doing all they can to dial that down, so they put pressure on the channel. Uh, and you know, even some of the most loyal Nutanix channel partners that work with Dell have had pressure to do more and more VX Rail. So I expect it to have impact, but um, just as, you know, Dave, I'll, I'll dial back the clock. You know, you probably remember when EMC had a relationship with HP, and HP killed the OEM of EMC storage, EMC stormed back um, and you know, got a lot of those accounts. Same thing happened when EMC and Dell broke up a couple of years before the acquisition. So Nutanix is storming to go uh, with, with HPE as one of their server partners and do their, so can Nutanix keep their growth and momentum going as Dell is no longer uh, their biggest partner? Well, they're fighting a two-front war. They got one you know, with Dell VMware, and they're also fighting the, the war with the, the public cloud guys, even though they're partnering with the public cloud guys. Right, they're sort of it, it, taking that cloud model, but of course it's, it's on-prem, so you say, you know, how does public cloud affect HCI spending? Not a significant impact on spending intentions yet. Is it the, it, can I infer from that that you do expect there to be pressure on that second front? Yeah, um, so as I've talked about uh, before, Dave, when we look at VMware, and VMware gives the VMware cloud in AWS and say, great, that gives me a nice path to be able to use public cloud, but maybe I don't need some of this VMware licensing and software in there. Uh, the question uh, for, for Nutanix is very similar. What services do they have? How do they become more sticky in customer environments? And absolutely, they're driving a roadmap for that and working with their customers. Well, the thing about Nutanix is their customers are really happy. Their customers really like Nutanix. They like the, the simplicity. Uh, you know, I've talked to a number of Nutanix customers that are very happy in that regard, and they have a, a leading product in that regard. Uh, but the, you know, they're aiming at the multi-cloud space, yeah, and, 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 and Dave, they play there. You make a really good point. The 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 killer. You know, use case. You know, what did HCI deliver? It delivered simplicity. Today, if you talk about public cloud in general, or even hybrid or multi-cloud, simplicity is not how you would you would describe this. So, can the, the customers that did the company that did HCI, so VMware, Nutanix, uh, HPE, and Cisco, they're all fighting for that hybrid and multi-cloud environment, and if they can help deliver simplicity of management, simplicity of leveraging my data, they can be successful in that space. Okay, so you're you're sort of positive on the multi-cloud, their, their position in multi-cloud, even though they're not one of the big five. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the good news for a Nutanix is that they're growing off a much smaller base uh, than say VMware when you say they have five or 600,000 you know, customers, uh, you know, hey, how big of an impact will public cloud have on All them? right, so we don't pick stocks, you know, we're not making recommendations, <laughs> you know, there's a, the, but, but are you, are you, do you feel like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's overdone, that it's undervalued, independent of the macro? Uh, do you feel like the the pressure on Nutanix is is warranted, or do you feel like it's got legs? So uh, you know, I, I feel you know, Wall Street tends to over adjust when they go through things. Uh, when I talk to my friends, uh, you know, on the Wall Street stuff, definitely Nutanix took more of a beating probably than they should have. But they had two quarters that weren't great, and some of that was the management changes. They blamed that they couldn't hire sales and marketing fast enough. Something we'd asked, you know, if you're a company in the valley and you've gone from you know a few hundred people to a few thousand people, you know, how do you keep adding good quality people? That, that, that's challenging. So, yes, I think we, we've actually seen, Dave, in the last week or so, Nutanix has been one of the fastest growing stocks in the tech market, so they're adjusting some. So, uh, you know, I, I still think uh, Nutanix has plenty of room for growth. Um, the question is, what's their path to say $2 billion, or is it an exit for, you know, $9, $10 billion down the road? All right, Sue, great stuff. Thank you for that analysis, and thank you for watching watching this uh, episode of The Cube Insights powered by ETR. This is Dave Vellante for Stu Miniman. We'll see you next time.